Hi, I've been thinking about making a pigeon video for about a year now, but there's already a lot of videos up on YouTube, so is it really necessary? I mean, the default values of kiss and beta flight and race flight is really good, so the need of knowing tuning is not that big nowadays, but I recently built this one. It's a Halo RC frame and I really like this quad. It got a beta flight board on it and I thought that sharing is caring, so I'm gonna talk you through the 10 steps, how I do it to get a mini tune perfectly tuned. So let's go. First off, I start with P gain on roll. And what do I look for? I simply cruise around and wanna see if the quad holds its line. If I do a sweeping corner or a sharp turn, then I gotta see if it dips down. And if it doesn't really hold its line, then you need to increase P gain on roll. But if it does fast oscillations when you enter the corner, then it's too high and you need to decrease it. Next up, P gain on pitch. A quad normally flies at an angle between 30 to 60 degrees, depending on if you fly slow or fast, freestyle or racing, but you want to make sure that it holds its position, the angle. Even though you apply throttle, if you do a split S above a tree and come down, you want it to be locked in. If it's going doing like a cheek up thing when you apply throttle, then you need to increase P on pitch. If it oscillates really fast, then it's too high. Next up is TPA. TPA is a scaling of pitch and it allows you to run a little bit higher P gain and still get it smooth. So do a punch out and see that do you have fast oscillations when you go full throttle? Then you increase TPA. When you have a smooth punch out with no oscillations, then you know the TPA is fine. This allows you to have a little bit higher P, which means your P gain will be higher at low throttle and mid throttle with a little bit better response. I gain. I gain makes the quad not drift around. So start off with doing a full throttle badass punch out and see if it stays level. If it tends to drift in one direction, increase your I gain. What does a high, too high I gain means? If you're running I gain a little bit too high, it feels like the air is thick. Something is working your quad in a way that it doesn't doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel snappy, it feels like you need an extra force to turn around, then is I term too high. Okay. I term on pitch. I term really want it to lock in position, kind of like P. So what I normally do is that I fly in a straight line and blip the throttle to see if it really stays in this direction. So just fly straight forward, blip the throttle, and you see if it's got uh, any tendencies of not wanting to hold its position. It's very similar to P gain, so just fly there, increase it until it feels really good. Next thing I do is anti gravity. Anti gravity is a value that makes the quad more locked in after a quick throttle change. So if you do something like a punch out and rapidly throw the throttle down and it feels a little bit like loose and not connected, then you need to increase the anti-gravity. What I normally do is that I fly like a half loop, kill the throttle and pointing it down. Then it should have a sharp stop and not be floaty, just constantly locked in. So that's a good maneuver to adjust the anti-gravity. D-term on road. This value is the value that can make the motors hot. So you gotta be careful and only make small adjustments. When I set the D term on roll, I basically fly around doing snappy rolls and see how it stop after a movement. If it does a big bounce back, then D term is too low. If it stops really sharp, but have a fast oscillation, then it's D term too high. D term on pitch is basically the same thing as on roll. Fly around, do some half flips and see if it has any bounce back or fast oscillations. Do a quick flip. If it bounces back, then D term is too low. If it does a fast oscillation, then it's D term too high. D term also helps you with prop wash. So do like a split S above a tree and try to fall down as vertical as possible. If it starts to do like a motion like wobbling, that's prop wash. When you fall down into the unclean air, 
that's prop wash and if you still have prop wash increase both degain on pitch and roll until it disappears but be careful because D-turn can make the motors hot so increase only in small values at a time yaw is actually one of the hardest values to get correct what I do is that I start off with flying line of sight and do some pirouettes and I want to see how it stops if it like shakes rapidly when I stop after a pirouette then the p values are a bit too high so then I just decrease it after that I start to fly around and do some upright jaw spins if the value is too low it doesn't really stay horizontal when doing a spin it's like want to dip down or gotta it's making the jaw spins look like a corkscrew then I increase it until I'm able to make snappy and level jaw spins upright and also inverted of course so that's how I set the jaw values set point weight it's not a matter of right or wrong it's a personal thing so running a high set point value means it's more tight but a little bit robotic so I run a value of 0.6 it it's really good for my freestyle and makes it look quite smooth and I don't lose that much of a stick feel